So yeah, first of all, I actually used two cheap vintage lenses to shoot the footage for that sequence. But this one, the Pentax 50mm f1.7, I only used like 10% of the time, maybe even less than that. Not because it's bad, because it's not, it's awesome. But I just don't use a 50mm that often. Most of the time I naturally go for something wider, like a 35 or a 28. And so, yeah, that's the only reason why I didn't use it that much. But I decided to get both the 28mm 2.8 and the 50mm 1.7 because I know a lot of you like the 50mm, the nifty 50. And I just don't want anyone to feel left out. And so, yeah, I spent double the amount of money so all you nifty 50 shooters don't have to feel left out. Think about that. But no, seriously, I just wanted to make sure that the 50mm is just as good as the 28mm in case you don't like the 28mm. That's it. And the 50mm actually gets an even better score than the 28 on the internets, but you know, they're both awesome. As long as you pay attention to a few things if you're planning to buy one of these. But I'll tell you about that in a bit. First, um, so yeah, I use these on my Sony a7S III, but you can use them on Canon, Fujifilm, Nikon, it doesn't matter. All you need is a lens mount adapter. And you can just get the super cheap one because they're manual lenses. So no need to go for an adapter that supports autofocus and things like that. The one I have is from Newer, it was 20 bucks I think. I'll put a link in the description. And the lenses themselves aren't expensive either because they're not rare. They're easy to find all manual, so manual focus, manual aperture, and the prices range anywhere from I think 30 bucks to 100. But you have to be a bit careful if you want to buy a vintage lens, especially if you want to get one for cheap, like 30 bucks. Because look, they all have imperfections and that's fine, as long as those imperfections don't significantly affect your image in a negative way. You know what I mean? Because of course you don't want the middle of the frame to be blurry or anything like that. So always make sure that you get them from a reputable website. A reputable, whoa. A reputable website. A reputable website, yes, where they test them. The ones I bought, for example, uh, it said something like, I don't remember exactly, but it was something like cleaned and tested, minor dust and slight haze still inside, but no significant effect on image quality. Something like that. And if you want to test them yourself, then make sure that you do it in different lighting conditions. Because sometimes you might not see an imperfection in the shadow, but then when you go out in the sun and the sun hits the lens at a specific angle, you know, the middle of the frame might be hazy or whatever. But like I said in one of my previous videos, I buy these lenses, these vintage lenses, for the imperfections. I don't want everything to look super sharp, I don't want the flares to look perfect, I just want that imperfect, organic, vintage filmy look. Now, obviously it's not just the lens that gives my footage that look, I also did some color grading with my LUTs and I added some halation, film grain, so it's a film emulation, but that's what I like. And a vintage lens just adds an extra layer, you know, it's the cherry on top. It finishes off the look. Is that how you say it? I'm not sure. But anyway, the point I want to make is that I don't need a perfect lens for the look I'm going for here, that you saw in the intro sequence. That's also why I'm not pixel peeping in this video. I'm usually not pixel peeping, but in this video it's even more pointless. Sure, I could show you the imperfections and the dust and maybe that the corners are not 100% sharp and everything, but why? The whole image, the whole sequence, the overall result, that's what counts. Are you perfect? No, right? And I still like you. And I know I'm not perfect, definitely not. So yeah, there you go. Embrace the imperfectness. 
And that's also why I always try to show you something I created with the gear that I'm talking about. Instead of just talking about it and showing you sharpness graphs and I don't know, that's just so useless and pointless in my opinion. And by the way, these lenses, they're photography lenses, but you can use them for both video and photography, of course. I mean, is there such a thing as a photography lens or a videography lens? I don't know. If you want to shoot photos with a huge anamorphic cinema lens, why not? I mean, you look stupid doing it, but that doesn't matter. If the end result looks good, then it's fine. Just look stupid and, you know, go for it. Now, something else that I also have to tell you about that intro sequence. Um, I shot everything at the Acropolis without an ND filter because I forgot to take one and yeah, the Acropolis was day one, so no ND filter. And so my aperture was set at 16 and 22 even for most shots. But you know, I kind of like the look. It makes it look... Uh, I don't know, I, I don't know the word, I, I can't find a word for it, but it just looks nice. Maybe because usually we photographers and videographers, we shoot at wider apertures because we want some background blur. And yeah, almost everybody shoots like that, so we're kind of used to that look. Maybe it's overused even, and yeah, we're not used to that small aperture look. Maybe that's why I like it and why it looks so different. I don't know. Anyway, I'm blabbering and I'm sweating my ass off because it's 30 degrees outside. And in here, I have no idea, but it's even warmer, I think. So let's finish this video. So yeah, I think that these are two very special lenses. Not because they're rare or hard to find, because they're not. No, I think they're special because they're easy to find and because they're cheap. Because that makes them accessible to most of you, pretty much everyone, right? Because I want all of you to enjoy filmmaking and photography and fun, good gear. And that's also why I usually focus on budget gear and cheap gear and how you can create with almost no gear. Cheap budget gear will do the job just fine. Especially if you like to color grade and, you know, make your footage look like the way I do. A little bit vintagey, retro, some grain. Why would you even buy an expensive modern lens if you want that look, right? Maybe for the autofocus, but you know, the little mistakes that you make when using a manual focus lens, it's also part of the look. So yeah, I think that every photographer, every videographer needs at least one vintage lens in their kit to get that beautiful, perfectly imperfect or imperfectly perfect look. Does that make sense? And these, both of them are cheap, easy to find, so I think it's a great option as a first vintage lens. Okay, I'm gonna end here. Let me know what you think. Do you like the 50? Do you like the 28? Uh, if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. It's barbecue time. Salut and tot de volgende.